tonight, NBA TV Fan Night Doubleheader, Bulls Heat, 7.30 Eastern, followed by the Warriors and the Hawks. Chris Weber will be joined in studio by Greg Anthony and Ernesto Johnson. NBA on TNT, NBA TV analyst and birthday boy Chris Weber joins us now. <laughs> 43, Chris. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. Uh, I know, man. Time is, time is flying, man. Time is flying. I remember thinking like people that were in their 40s, <laughs> like were on their deathbed when I was a teenager. So <laughs> I guess that's me now. I woke up back hurting, neck hurting and all that. So, uh. Happy birthday, baby. How you doing? Good. Uh, when do you think, at what age, you won't be able to dunk anymore? Well, I saw something. I don't know if it's true, but I heard Dr. J dunks on his birthday every year for, uh, you know, up until 60. I think he was still doing it. So hopefully uh, hopefully I can, that's something I can do a long time. Hopefully up until, you know, I'm 70, I can once a year be able to pull out a, pull out a dunk. So that's something I hope to do, even though I'm, I'm that's probably the only time I go back on the basketball court. Do you have a hoop at your house? I do, man. I, uh, I have a barn, and I built a, a big gym I used to work out in a long time ago. And now, besides my nephews coming over and me working with them on some free throws or something, or jump shots, it, it gets no use. It's straight dusty in there. So I, I have a gym, but uh, uh, it doesn't get any much use anymore. But that... Like, I always loved shooting by myself. It was just there was something about it you, that you were able to escape. But you did it for a living. Do you look at basketball differently? Like, you couldn't go, hey, I'm just going to go on outside and shoot a little while just to clear my head or something. No, you know what I do for that now? I go to the range. So <laughs> I uh, finally got my game up to where I could get some blades. And uh, so now my thing is I'm just – I've been, like, training camp for the last three years. I was getting my butt beat out there by everybody. So – not that many of people have seen my game the last three years because I've just been at the range thinking, uh, you know, hitting, hitting clubs, putting on a, some headphones there. So that's kind of where I get, get my thinking at more on the golf range. What's tougher, basketball or golf? Ooh, you know what? Um, I, you know, if, if I, I wish I would have played golf in, in high school. If I would play golf at, at 8, 9, 10, uh, I'm, I'm sure I look at the game a little bit differently, but definitely by far it's the most difficult game I've played. But I think if I were to start off like my friends that played at a young age where they understand the mechanics from the beginning, I, I think it, you know, it would definitely be easier than this for somebody like me that went out and self-taught themselves the wrong way and then uh, had to make up for it and go try to fix it and find it somewhere. Well, see, it doesn't seem fair that Steph Curry is the best player in the NBA, or at least one of them, and he's a great golfer as well. That, that, I mean, his life isn't fair, man. Like he's he's one of the guys. Like I just I hate him. You know what I mean? Like in, in the best ways possible. He has a beautiful family. His parents are great. His daughter's on there smiling. He has a golf game, and I love it because he's like the kid that everybody wants to bully, but he just keeps smiling, and, and it just frustrates everybody. So Steph is definitely one of my favorite players. But he does make it look too easy when he's out there playing ball. I mean, I call him a human video game, and then you know he can play golf. You know, only my baseball and hockey friends seem to be able to, you know, play that effortlessly with that hand-eye coordination. But Steph, he's, uh, he's a freak, man. All right, but we, we keep trying to compare him or if he played in a different era. And, look, I understand you guys are territorial. You think when you played it was the toughest time to play or the competition was the best. I, I understand all of that, whether it's Isaiah or Oscar Robertson. But I, I, still, I still look at Steph and say that handle – Back in the 70s, he still would have been able to do what he's doing. Now, it, it would have been more physical, but the athletes, they weren't as good back then. So how do you, how do you, where do you fit in with that argument here of comparing different generations here and different players? Right. Well, Bill Russell told me one time when I asked him just about how great Wilt could run, and I asked him, you know, who could run faster in the 40 or something that he think Shaq could or you know, we were just having this conversation. And he was just like, young fellow, don't ever compare goats. Don't ever compare different um, ages. And so that's the true answer. But that being said, let me compare these ages. <laughs> um, I'll just say like this. The only, the only argument I've ever had about Steph's greatness was that to say he's the greatest, not, not necessarily with dribbling or shooting because that's true. But to say his game is the greatest, averaging 30, doing all these things, after two seasons would be disrespectful to him. It's like we always want to crown somebody the best. 
And I would say to you that KG wouldn't have been better than the KG that had to retire 10 years ago. Like, it's the full context of your career. And so all, all I'm saying is that I believe he'll continue to do this 10 more years. So will he be one of the best ever? Yes. But when I have kids or guys at the barbershop, you know, 12-year-olds saying, oh, he's better than Jordan, the only thing I'm saying is just, <laughs> is just you know, wait. You know, just, just, just wait a little bit. That's all, because in two years I just – you know, I don't know if you can be the greatest after two seasons. That, that, that's all I'm saying. But he could have played in any era, and he would have averaged, you know, maybe 50 uh, back in the day. But that being said, you know, of course you couldn't shoot as many threes. Bird only averaged, I think, one and a half threes a game. And you know he's one of the best shooters ever. So the game has changed. The rules have changed. And I do honor that. But in saying all that, you still have to have skill. And to me, we've seen a player like LeBron that is – probably the most physically intimidating player I've seen. We've seen Jordan and Kobe, some of the greatest players I've ever seen. But no, I've never seen a player with the skill set, straight up being able to do what Coach Carrillo at Princeton loves, shoot, pass, and dribble, as I've seen Steph Curry. Never in my life, no. Period. You remember the first time you faced Jordan? What was that, 93? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember the first time I faced Jordan. But how about this one? We're playing him. I think it's the year they won 72 games. I don't know. But he's sitting in the, he's sitting in the arena on his Ferrari. And I, I think I told somebody this, but this is the only time I let a teammate down. I feel like I threw a teammate under the bus. So I'm getting off the game. It's game three or game two. We're playing in the arena, and he's in the arena smoking a cigar. He's smoking a freaking cigar before the game as if it's over. So Juwan and I get off the bus, and, uh, and he's like, yo, who, who's checking me today? And this is when you're supposed to say, man, shut up, man. We about to, we about to beat y'all. But Calvin Chaney walks on, off the bus after us, and we all look back like, uh, this will be your victim this evening. And he went on to score 54 there in Chicago. <laughs> so I just remember how <laughs> I just remember how cutthroat he was and uh, how competitive he was. And, you know, playing against him and playing against Kobe with that Shaq team, you know, I, I know that I've played against some of the best players. Um, and uh, I, I tell you this, I've, I haven't played against Curry in this state, um, but I see what he does, and uh, I, I just don't know how you would check him, especially with the pick and roll, especially with his range and the fact that he gets to the hole. We don't give him credit. The reason why he's such a great shooter is because, one, he's a great shooter. Secondly, is because he can get space with his dribble. But he's not just getting space to back up or to step back. He will take it to the hole and lay it up over the tallest, the most intimidating shot blocker. And all those skills together – um, it is what makes him, you know, one of the greatest to me. He's uh, Chris Weber, NBA on TNT. They got the uh, NBA TV fan uh, doubleheader coming up tonight. Bulls Heat followed by the Warriors and the Hawks. Mark Cuban said maybe move the three-point shot back. What do you think? Yeah, I, you know, I, I love Mark, but I just think, you know, I just, unless, you know, maybe he sees in the future, in 10 years, everybody will be able to shoot this well. But I, I just think to make changes for one guy is to almost diminish what he's doing. For us to smooth the line back, that means that we're saying everybody can shoot like Steph. But doesn't it That's help Steph, true. though, Chris? It, it, it helps Steph. It, it's like they made golf courses longer to Tiger-proof it, but it helped Tiger because he hit it longer than everybody else. Yeah, it would help Steph. It, I mean, it really it, it's not affecting Steph is what I'm saying. I yeah. don't know if he wants to do that because Dirk is getting older and there's no one else that can shoot like Steph, so... To move the line back concedes that you will have guys on your team that can shoot like Steph. And I say, that can't happen. Just because you see it all the time does not mean guys can shoot like this. What we're seeing right now is, is not normal. This guy is not human, what we're seeing. And I don't think to move the line back would already be like conceding some evolution in the game. We're going to move the three-point line back but not let people follow on the free throw line? Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. Steph is great. And, no, if you moved it back 10 feet, Steph would still – <laughs> kill this league, but other players would. It's period. They would hurt the game, I think, because other players can't shoot like stuff. Hope you have a great birthday, Chris. Great to catch up with you again. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Have a good one. All right, Chris Weber, NBA on TNT. They got the uh, NBA TV fan night double dip, Bulls Heat, Warriors and the Hawks.